What's up, man? How's it going? Pretty good. How's your day going? Pretty good. Nice, easy Saturday. Did you work today? No, I didn't, actually. Thank goodness. That's good. Yeah, just did some stuff around the house. Just got just got back from throwing. So. Uh, oh, how'd, the, how'd it go? It was Where'd good. Yeah, it was great. I'm, I'm working on um, like a full spin for the stones. Okay. Stones need a lot of work and... Might as well. Might as well start from the ground up. And uh, I'm a couple inches short of a like my PR from a glide. So, like I say, it's going pretty good. <laughs> is it? And you're saying that your first practice with full spin? No, no, no. This is my third or fourth. Well, man, that's a good omen if it's your third or fourth practice. Yeah, I committed to it, and it seems to be paying off. But I'm, I'm throwing off like with shot shoes off concrete, so we'll see how cleats and and grass works out. That's fun. Yeah, and I did some one turns with the heavyweight and uh, just trying to work on some things, keeping my head up, stop staring at the ground. Hot yeah. Eyes up, chest up, head up, that kind of stuff. Oh, dude, yeah. I like when I, when I throw weights, like I'm just, I'm in here like that and it goes nowhere. So, yeah, you're but, all proud. Yeah, that's what it says. Proud. Superman. Up, and I'm like, all right, I'll try it. And, you know, and, and that I'm, I'm like nine inches off my PR, so off of one turn. With so. the one turn, yeah, yeah, like like my full throw. I'm in, I'm a couple inches off with the one turn, so so it works. Keeping your head and chest up works. <laughs> I'll be darned. <laughs> I'll be darned. Yeah, no, it works right there. It um, like for me, the drop in the head and the chest, I think, gives me an artificial sense of depth. Like you getting being low, you got to be low in the throw. And that that lowness has got to come from the knees, not dropping the upper body or anything like that. So I think that's where some of that habit comes from. Bad habit, at least for me. Yeah, you know, like staying up and bending the knees, and the I, hips more. For me, it's backline fouls. You 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 found that backline too many times off that cast. You want to stare at your feet, make sure you're not hitting it. Okay. And uh, that that I think that's where it started for me. And uh, you know, like smaller local comps how my weights have been going, like, you know, it gets by, but these bigger competitions staring at the ground, isn't going to get you very far. Yeah. No, 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 not at all, man. Oh, all right. There's so how many practices, like, what do you, what's your training been looking like? Um, so today, today was stones and weights and just yeah. today. Some hammers too. Just lighter, heavy wines. Yeah, I, I did. Um, so, uh, Justin Blatnick put, put it out on Instagram for, uh, a little challenge of like uh, just a one turn, a one wind with the with the both hammers, and uh, see what you get. And uh, th those actually did pretty well. I mean, I, I pulled from the ground on a couple of them, pulled from uh, a dynamic start because I mean, for me on hammers, like pulling from the ground on like a one wind, it doesn't get you into anywhere close to the position that I want to be in for a, a full release. And so a dynamic start gets me that speed and a little bit more puts me in that right position where my knees are how, how like but based on my ligaments, you know, how my uh, knees, I like to have them pointed to the ground a little bit and off a dynamic gets me there. So like we're doing the one turn on the hammer. Uh, 
the dynamic do you so on the light hammer do you think the one turn throw you can get the speed going or still do it at a dynamic start even for the light hammer for this little challenge what'd you do how'd it go I, yeah <laughs> yeah i, I mean I, I did both so i think from the ground i, I did um I think it was 93 or 97, something like that. And then off a of dynamic, it was like 107, I think. But uh, so like I can get the speed from the ground off, off of the, with the light hammer. It just doesn't put me in the right position to where I'm going to finish at. Cause on a full throw, like, you know, I'm, I'm head back, arms fully extended, crossing over and uh, my knees are bent like super far down and uh but off but off of like point from the ground on a one wind it just doesn't get me there and i could muscle it that's kind of what i felt like i was doing so it wasn't putting me in the right position and uh so then i switched the dynamic to get me into that right feel of it go back and talk a minute about like that pulling back and around like the position you're trying to get on your finish or on your winds like uh you're talking about getting far and back like how are you trying to cue yourself uh, on the on the winds as you go through for this one turn, like how was it different for the one turn di for the dynamic start than it was for the release on the throws? How are they feeling today? How are they clicking? They, I mean, they're 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 feeling amazing. It it's um you know for like every practice, you know the first couple throws are always a little wonky, so like maybe that's a lot of it. Just I needed some I need some throws to really feel myself again because I mean this is the first time I touched hammers since Worlds and. Uh, they were way off. Like they were, they were not what they yeah. want to see, but like, you know, it's off season and, uh, and I haven't really practiced them at all, but yeah. Very good right there, man. Let's start, let's start talking about the worlds right there. I, I found, uh, let's start pulling up some of the throws right there. So you just got done with, uh, with weights and, uh, coming into the, coming into the heavy hammer right here. How did you warm up, uh, for the heavy hammer or for the hammers? At Worlds, how'd you warm up? How what were you thinking? What were you trying to do with your positions and the feels? Yeah, so I mean, started starting with the heavy. Um, I'll, I'll take depending on how I'm feeling, and like, I mean, if I'm feeling like really like groggy, because you know we're starting traditional order, so like I was feeling pretty warmed up. If I mean, if we would have started on, you know, something else like one or one event before, and then we go to hammers or something like that, which happens. Yeah, I, a lot, a lot more warm ups. A lot, just just casting it fast and into the ground, and uh, and for at Worlds, what I actually did was just because like there were, there were twelve of us warming up for hammers, so we didn't have enough heavies, and someone was using one of the lights, which I was my next go to to warm up with, is just grab the light hammer. I think I grabbed uh, one of the women's hammers. I think it was a twelve. There's a twelve. There's twelves there too. Yeah, yeah. I grabbed one of those and I just ripped that thing. I was like, oh, this, I feel, I feel amazing because like. <laughs> You know, with with the with those really light hammers, it's so much easier to hit your positions exactly how you want and get to them fast. And I think that that kind of fired me up to be like, well, we got a hole to dig out of coming coming out of those first couple events coming into hammers. And I was like, you could really you could really feel this one, like so. Yeah, so I, I just took a couple couple good wines with with um with a women's hammer that I got a, a chance to grab onto one of the heavier ones and. And you know, a couple wines cast it right into the ground. And uh, I know a lot of guys for for warming for warming up, they'll, uh, they'll they'll do they'll do a whole progression, right? It's one wind into the ground, and then next time they'll do two, and then two or three more uh, attempts um, with, that are full, like you know, three wines, kick it into the ground. And uh, and uh, you know, I'm, like you just took the one throw, the one the very short, much shorter kind of warm up there. Yeah, I mean, if I if I'm feeling it, I'll go full. I'll go full on and do like maybe two warm up throws and kick into the ground full throws as fast as I can, just to just to get there. And uh, I think it worked out pretty well. I mean, man, let's uh, let me pull up. Let me share my screen and pull up your first throw here. On uh, So man, you had a great progression in heavy hammer. Mm -hmm. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right, so I think this is about, I think they're taping. 
No, that is your, is that your throw? I think that was your throw. Back it up a bit here. That's yeah. Dory. Oh. Maybe you were just keeping an eye and keeping it kosher. Yeah. <laughs> to making sure double checking everybody's marks. Yeah, here you are getting ready. Yeah. Yeah, I knew I knew he Matt was throwing some bombs that day, so I wanted to I wanted to see that tape. <laughs> yeah, um he ended up throwing some records that day too. Yeah. But uh but your opening throw right here, uh you know, this is oh that was your throw. This is Jeff up, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay, back this up a little bit. This is you. There. There's that head. <laughs> <laughs> How was the ground feeling that day? You remember? It was pretty, oh, it was pretty that hard. Day. Amazing. I was worried, you know, Arizona, desert. I'm like, yeah. I, don't want, I want my blades to work. And the ground was great. It's it's freshly watered, it seemed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was fairly green. We had some rain. Here we go. Oh. So that one taped out to 93.9. Yep. And that 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 start, that set me off. I was like, well, if my first throw is 93.9, that's that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good for the heavies because you know yeah. like, sometimes my first throw it's gonna be 83. And I'm like, well, it could go up really big from here or it could just stay pretty flat i've had both but so coming the, that opener like that that was that got me fired up so i that you know i was gonna make some big throws that day yeah so at, when you made that throw that would have put you third after the end of the first flight not everybody had thrown here yeah what i what I, like the the difference between your first line and your second line like your positions are so very different between that right there. I want to see if I can pause that um, at the point right there. Like you take your wind, kind of that position right there. Like uh, how would you describe you taking your – and then – So when I'm, when I'm – Just pulling, right there, like that difference in position in your torso. And that's – Go ahead. That's pulling pulling from the floor, which like I just started doing again. I used to like – just like everyone, they start pulling from the floor. I switched it to a, di a dynamic start um, for the full throw. Cause it just got the speed where I wanted it to be. Um, but just halfway through this year, I was like, well, take a step back and see, cause at some point I was going too fast. Wasn't building anything. Too and, fast on the first one. Yeah. So pulling from the floor, you, you're going to like, I, I call it a reset, right? So like you pull it and you get it around. You're, you're pretty much just rolling it around your body and just kind of getting it to that low point on the, on that, on that right side. And then, um, and then from there, like that's when you really put the speed on it, and you're able to stretch it out where you want to be. I've seen a lot of guys; they're they're doing one reset, two reset, and then like maybe on that third one they'll get a little bit longer, but they're not stretching it like they need to be. Mm. And uh, so, like I always try to think is, is that that first one is just to get it off the ground and get it moving, and then that second one that's like. When you're on your when you're on your right side after the cast, that's when you really need to start stretching yourself out. Because if you don't, then you're just going to get stuck in that groove of just rocking your elbows around, rocking your elbows around, just like kind of around like the top of your head, rolling it around. And and if and if you're doing that, you're that generally to me that means you're not loading your blades, and uh, you need to like be able to trust your blades, get a good get a good stick in. So that way you can stretch yourself out and you're not having to just stay over your over your feet the entire time. I like that phrasing there you use it load I like that phrasing right there, loading your blades. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if anyone else uses that term, but I think uh, that's probably the best way to describe it. Is just because like a lot of guys will they'll, they'll kick in, you know, and they're like, I got a good stick and they never really trust their blades because either they're not super confident with them or they just don't know how to kick their hips out and just like counterbalance your weight. And you, you can't really do that without, um, w without blades or loading your blades. You can't counterbalance yourself. You need to get that good stretch. 
Is that the, like, can you see the screen with the, with you on there? Yep. Where I got it paused. I mean, that's probably the best place. I'm going to pause it right there. We're getting that stretch right there. Like your shanks are nearly parallel to the ground. Yeah. Have some... Yeah. And that's, that's one thing that like I, I tried working on in the past because it, it just gets my body a little too low doing that. But anything I try to change to keep my, my, my shins and more vertical, it just, it just throws me out of whack. So like, this is the best way I can do to with the speed that I'm what I'm doing to counter that the counter that ball at the end is just sink my knees down pretty low. And I don't, I don't even do it intentionally. It just kind of works out that way. Reaching back and push trusting your blades, loading them up. Just where it ends up being the body. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've done what a lot of people say to do is like find, find a thrower that has a similar body to you height and build. And like, and if they're good, kind of try to do what they do and uh i don't know somebody you kind of followed well i I, I like uh uh nick aston because like he's not a huge dude like he's i mean he's tall and he's he's built but he's not you know he's not 320 pounds yes i'm watching him throw and like well we throw hammers completely different (laughs) like well i could try to do it like like nick does but it doesn't uh it doesn't doesn't get me anywhere but what I, I, from like looking at like old tape, like the only person I've seen like with their knees like that was like probably like Matt Vincent back in the day. Like he kept yeah. very active, like low knee. It seemed like because how he would do like he would kind of cork himself down like through the throw and then like f- just explode up in the finish and and it kind of looks like I do something similar to that. Al- Alistair Gunn also comes to mind, like an I- older thrower right there. I mean, he was a short guy. Mm-hmm. great hammer thrower like the way you kind of pull like just trying to imagine what you're talking about yeah very good so um this is your second throw man coming up here she so had 93 nine this is 95 nine so going into this throw you're feeling pretty good yeah like predictions and speed on this yeah I think it's over with 93 nine Watch his knees and his hips. Watch his watch. His, watch his, oh, here you get your scream at the end. <laughs> well, there you go, man. So that was ninety-five nine. So like two foot, two foot improvement there. And that at that throw, you'd edged out Nick's best throw, his opener. So that was a throw. Uh, Got you moved you another moved you to second place. You there? Oh yeah. I was, okay. I was watching the video. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have the Google Meet things open. I was like, man, if he dropped connection and I've been talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, and that 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 second was a very good heavy hammer for me. I think I've only I think I've only ever done that in competition maybe twice before maybe once only and uh yeah that 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 was that was actually a really good feeling because that was a couple inches off my my previous pr which was like uh 96 i think or no 97 yeah. so it'll be a foot or two off my uh my oh yeah one. and uh and that and that and that field was a very it was a very generous field for hammers and so, but so getting 95 on that was a very on with three quarter inch handles was like, I, I felt like king of the world at that point. It's like, that's a, that's a good throw. Yeah, man. And then I'm trying to find the, your final throw here. Is that you? Looks like it. I think that is you. I think that is you. I'm trying to look at my. There were many bald people out there. I'm wondering. <laughs> it's easy to tell you from Matt Adams. That's for sure. Right. But man, you have like a Don Fry mustache. Yeah, yeah. You got to. <laughs> oh, man, cool. third throw here. There we go. 
Keep it going with the final throw, the heavy hammer. Second place right now. This one was 96.3. This is another seven inches. There we go, man. So I had the, that was a great way to end Heavy Hammer for sure on a great series, just going all the way. And then 96.3, is that really close to your PR? Yeah, my, my previous PR was like 97 and a couple inches. But that, I mean, that was that was a crazy day when I got that, my, that last PR because it was half inch handles, which just have so much whip and they are just, just the yeah. funnest throw. <laughs> And uh, the hill was 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 nice. The throwing hammers on the hill that, that that's a good that's a good day to get a PR. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And, but these these were you know three quarter handles, not as much whip, and uh, and a very flat field, a very honest field. Yeah. And so 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 pulling that like like I mean that's what I count as my my PR is is this ninety six because. Like everything worked out exactly how it should. Everything perfect, and uh, perfect for me at least. I mean, I, I made sure to like going into that throw. Like, yeah, I, I could try to go faster, but that might throw me out of position. So I just, I just thought about positions. That first, that first wind really slow, get that reset, and pick it out and like aim for that low right, which I, I don't often do because you know. Your low point is going to drift over to the left as the throw progresses, but I just kind of kept it in the back of my head, you know, just keep it over there, see what happens, and it worked out. So when you're just kind of like some of the details here, like when you're lining up right here, uh, like when you're finding your blade spot, toes pretty even, is the uh, left foot back a little bit? Are they angled? Trying to, looks like you're trying to get them pretty straight. Like yeah. This is pretty really grainy. I pick my left, my left blade in first usually every time and then the right one comes after but i always miss like the right one i want them you know straight next to each other lined up but that that right foot always goes up like two inches further and i'm always like look that's not where it's supposed to be but it's like that every time but i, I keep them you know shoulder width apart just right underneath me and that way i can get the most mobility of my hips you know if you're not using blades go wide that's the only way Keep yourself from not just waving your toes around. But yeah, just keep how, them. Short. How when you, when taking your grip? Again, it's just something we can't see here. When taking your grip, uh, do you have just hands next to each other? You got anything interlaced? Like how is how are you trying to bring that handle across your fingers? Like how are you trying to set your hands on that on that setup there? So it's 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 weird because like I get a nice like you know good like right in the middle of my hand grip. And then I like release it and then kind of like I'll give myself one hell of a callus because like I'll I don't know if you can see it, but like when I re grab it, I'll kind of bunch up like right underneath my, my pads here. Okay. That's so like I'm kind of like I don't know, like monkey gripping it a little bit. Yeah. On on both hand go which hand again? Just the left? Yeah, my, my yeah, my bottom hand or top hand, whatever. My first hand. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then the and that then the the right hand it, it 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 depends like i put i put it in a position for to where like i'm a little my arms like a little bent like i can i can twist it so i'm like this so my arms will be more straight but i pretty much like i don't know like that one of those do it again show that again to the camera show right, like again. you know bar here or handle here in this like that okay that's pretty much how it works out. Cause like I, I've tried it this way. I've tried it like really, I've tried all different ways, but the easiest way, most consistent way is just to like put your hands there like that. And it works out. So I, I think I go back and find that spot there. 47 minutes. You know, and that's, and that's one of the pitfalls of the dynamic start is like you, you have your, your left hand in a good spot. You're like, I like this spot. And then you swing that other one down. It might land here. It might land here. It might land here. It might land like this. It might. I've missed it and they caught it like that with like two fingers on it. 
that point, you're just, you got to go with it. So that's a big pitfall for the dynamic start. So first turn, you're just trying to find that low point, uh, push to the right. And uh, you can really see that low point progression coming across there. But ah, damn it, this is that, that uh, kept your second spot or well, improved your second spot in the heavy hammer. Yeah, it's a, it's always a stressful time, like uh, coming into a, a higher a, a higher position on on the on the flight, uh, knowing that there's more guys coming after you. So, but that but that was that was a pretty big throw that I felt I felt confident that I wasn't going to get knocked down too far from it. I needed those points. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You want to start talking about light hammers? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, so Jake 117. Oh, what, what, any, um, what'd you do? So man, uh, we had a long time between some of these cause Doherty took extras. Yeah. So uh, did you, do, did you do any warm ups or like just stay hydrated, stay relaxed from yeah. going from heavy to light? Yeah, just stay relaxed because I mean, usually on like when I practice, like I'll I'll do hammers on a Sunday when I have like four or five guys with me, and uh, okay, so we'll take turns and like then we'll sit around for ten minutes chit chatting, and so like I'm I'm pretty used to just sitting around between hammers, so like I I knew what I can do on the day, and uh, that was yeah, that's just it, just just wait. Just stay in, just uh, don't uh oh we had, we had two trigs run up here, so you uh moved over to the, I think we moved over to the second trig. We were moving back and forth. Yeah, this we is, uh, your this is your opener, your light hammer opener. Mm -hmm. This was uh this was your best one, uh one twenty four one. Are you sure are you uh, mean what's that? I can't see it. Oh, okay. No, that's right. I hit when you were when you were demo when you were demoing your hands. I hit the stop sharing. Thank you. One seventeen. Was that was Matt? I think that's you. Yes. Yeah. Very good. I was one twenty four. Let me back that up again. I didn't really see that. So just re-tacked up, just stayed loose, mm -hmm. and just got set up for the opener of the light hammer. These were also three-quarter inch handles. And uh, yeah. Oh, man, what'd you think of that throw? That was uh, that was very good for me. That was that, that beat my previous PR by like two feet. So, with oh man, that's that was, awesome. Yeah, and like like I said, like the last PR for both my hammers were in Kirksville, Missouri, with half inch handles on a, a generous field, <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I was really stoked to to come out with like such a big a big opener, and but I knew in the back of my head that's that's never good for me because. If I start off low, I'll build on it. But if I, especially on light and light hammer for sure, if I st if I come in low, I can build on it. But if I come out like with a banger, I don't know where I'm going to go from there. And, and that's kind of what it shook out to. I, I did have a good series though. Though that was probably one of the better, 
better competition throws I've ever had. Yeah, you went 124, 121, 119. Which is a great series. You said your P and that first throw was a two foot PR. Yeah. So all your throws were very, very close to PR, PR or very, very close to your throw yep. right there. What kind of are there any what what are some differences in cues or positions between your heavy and light hammer? Well, I mean, one, like just one of the biggest differences is just the fact that 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 first wind is going to be just slow, like my hands are made of concrete. And I do that intentionally because I know I can build off of that slow turn. The heavy hammer is a little, a little bit different where if you start off slow, but you're not going to be able to build as much just because it's heavy, heavier. And so the light one that first little cast, it's going to be slow. And then from there, I, I know that like now, now it's position time. It's just hit the positions one after another and stretch yourself out. And this, and if you're hitting the positions, the speed's going to come for sure. And as long as you're pushing on it, you got to stay pushing on it. Pushing on it, like um, pushing with your hands, uh, like pushing down, chopping and then pushing all the way through, like when you're talking about the different, like how far the arc you push. So the first wind, really easy, like you were saying right here. And then when you're pushing across with the first and the second and third, how are you thinking about pushing your hands or pushing or between each wind? The, the, way, the way I think about it the most is I'm pushing on it from, from like my, my – Oh, the catch point from like when it's like on my on my right up high i push down and when it gets to about my low point it's going to carry it's going to carry itself around as long as i'm still holding on to it it's going to get it back up to that next catch point and so there's like a good little you know window in there where that's where i'm really focusing on driving it very very good i don't like especially on the release i don't need to be pushing all the way through my left side it's going to kind of carry itself up through there and that's Okay, that's I, that's how I look at it. Whether right, wrong, or indifferent, that's that's kind of what goes through my head. So the practices like le like a gr a great ascending series in heavy hammer, and uh, like you said, start out with a banger on light, and then just kind of like just start out real high, and then just kind of went there. Um, second place in the heavy, third place in the light hammer. Um, in like the, in like the weeks leading up to Worlds, just like three, four, five weeks out, um, what was clicking? How how did practice and warm ups click, or how, what was going on in practice with your hammers, just leading into Worlds? Uh, le leading into Worlds, for like the previous like four weeks before, five weeks before, I I, I just I pretty much quit lifting and just started throwing four days a week consistently. <laughs> Hitting hammers uh, at least twice a week, and most of that time I wasn't touching the heavy hammer. Okay, and just just because of the nature of it's heavy er, and I don't want to throw it. And Maybe I can, a little bit more it takes I, less reps. Yeah, I can get a lot a lot of work done with just a light implement that that will carry over. And I mean, heavy weights a little a little bit different than hammers i would say but the hammers are are, are pretty consistent and uh and, I, and i've thrown them enough too that like i i i know if, if something feels right feels off and about uh, probably two weeks two weeks before worlds at a saturday practice where like i i beat my practice pr by a couple feet it was like 118 which with with my hammers and my field and I, I never I never go over like one fifteen very often. It gotcha. just and so like for me to have like a one eighteen, I was like, oh Damn. things things are right. And it, and like I even released a little bit early and so I was like <laughs> Okay. We're moving. I'm like that's that's good. That's what I want to see. But what so you stopped lifting about four weeks out and then just throwing so four days a week and just uh you said you made a point to hit hammers twice a week and just mostly light hammers. Yeah. It sounded like. And then practices, you'd uh, 
what would a warm what would warm up and a practice look like for hammers? Uh, warm up with uh, five wines, ten wines, or just kind of go right into almost competition mode from the start. How did warm ups kind of look in practice leading into worlds? Oh, in practice, I I mean because like I'll save it for the end just because of you know tacky and stuff. So like I'll I'll do okay. eights one of them like a Braemar, and then I'll do a lightweight. And then I'll move into hammer. So I'm pretty warmed up. So like, I don't need to take a bunch. Gotcha. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably take like maybe two attempts at like two or three wines and just kick it in the ground. Not super fast, just to feel the positions. And then from there I'll do like in a practice, I'll probably hit about 10 hammers. Not, not no more than that. Generally 10 is probably my max. And uh, the first two or three are going to be, pretty slow, pretty easy going. Just, you don't want to just tear yourself apart, you know? Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, after, after a couple like easy warm up tosses out into the field, then I, then I start putting some pepper on them, trying to feel those positions fully extended like I need to. And uh, yeah, no, no more than, no more than 10 usually just cause like, God, uh, if I'm out there by myself, it's a lot of walking. Yeah. And you've already thrown a, uh, two events stone or lightweight or wait for distance yeah that kind of going uh, gotta get moving <laughs> yeah yeah no for sure um so coming just kind of widening out even more so like a month out of worlds tons of throwing no more lifting uh what about two three four months away from worlds was it even, like four months away was it even on your radar uh like I, I don't know how the i don't know what the timeline was for everybody getting accepted and getting their invite but what did lifting and throwing look like uh maybe like two months away from worlds or three months away from worlds what did throwing and lifting look like how many days in the gym how many throwing days yeah so i, I in the gym like i'll alternate every three to four weeks um like a strength block and then a speed block and i know some people like we'll we'll mix those in like we'll have like you know like the west side type people will do you know it's conjugate <laughs> the other day i can't figure that stuff out i don't have all the bands and chains so <laughs> it's like I'll, I'll just i'll do a, a dedicated month of strength and then i'll move into speed and coming into like any big competition i like to finish with a speed block where because it's it's because it's not beating me down so bad and like and that's that speed work does translate into the throws like a like a lot it's this year i noticed it the most because i started started sprinting again, started doing like some jumps and stuff, different types of jumps. And uh, I'll really push on those during the speed blocks. And so coming out of a speed block into a competition week or a championship week, um, I'll, I'll really notice like uh, the effects of it. So that, that, that's interesting. You talk about the jumps and the sprinting right there. Um, so you, so that's, you're putting that into your speed block. Um, and what, what are the lifts looking like into the, in the speed block? Are the lifts any different or is it just the load and reps are different for your speed block leading into like the final speed block you do before worlds? Yeah. Uh, yeah go ahead. Yeah. All the movements are the same. I just, I changed percentages and um, like the rep scheme. So like a lot, lot less reps, um, more, more sets. And so yeah. like, I think 10 sets of two, stuff like that, 12 sets of two. To, uh, I'll start off with like uh, 12 sets of three, and that's a pretty light. I'll probably do that at like 65%. And uh, for my speed blocks, like I'm not going over 75% usually, and that, that'll be on like the last week where it's like uh, eight, eight sets of one or two, depending on. I think uh, clean snatches and cleans, I'll do, I'll do two reps, and then the other ones I'll do like singles. Okay and just focus on just moving the weight as fast as I possibly can. And I bet that weight adjusts depending on how the feeling is that day. Like if it's popping, you might put a little more weight on the bar or just be, peel it off a little bit if it's not feeling popping. And, and that's usually what I do just so I can keep the movement fast. Like if I'm benching and I'm, like it's not popping off the chest what I want, I'll, I'll, I'll drop weight just so I can keep the movement fast. And because it's... Depend. I mean, it all depends on how much like you squat, bench, deadlift, press, and clean stuff like that. Whether or not like you can get away with these sh like lighter reps, because like I mean, if you're if you're benching 
like a low amount of weight, like as, as your max, dropping it down to 50% and going for like speed reps isn't necessarily going to help you just because you're not getting like the actual, from, from, from what I understand, you're not getting like the stimulus. I agree. That, like get that speed work to actually work for you. But yeah. No, I, I agree. Like load on the bar matters. Um, and there is a minimum threshold that requires, like, I mean, in, in our sport, you know, doing stuff for example, just because like the heavyweight for distance is the heaviest thing, you know, at 42 pounds. Yeah. Doing stuff uh, either much lighter than that is like, why? Yeah. But, uh, but again, with like, if you're benching 200 pounds or if you're squat, if you're, you know, not squatting a lot and you're just a young lifter or learning um, more better time is spent just getting stronger before doing yep. speed work and dropping down to 35, 40, 50 percent. I mean, because it, it, yeah. it will to, to an extent, like if, if you're if you're not a super like strong in the back squat, like if dropping up speed work isn't going to help you, but like get just getting stronger into like to get to that that threshold. Right. You're still going to get you're still going to get more explosive. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of like a lot of lifters, a lot of throwers who can fucking jump up to their nipples, you know, like, but they never do speed work. They're just strong. And so like, it, so all of it helps, but just really focusing on like a speed block for, especially for throwers, I think is key. Do you, so speed work, you mentioned lifts in the gym and like varying the load right there. And then the sprinting and the jumping, uh, Tell, talk a little bit about that, the sprinting and the jumping right there. You said different types of jumps. Um, yeah. yeah, so like, well, for like, for like sprints, um, I, don't, I don't do anything special because I'm always terrified of blowing my hamstrings apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like, they, they always say like, oh, if you haven't sprinted a long time, you know, just don't dive right into it. That's going to be bad. <laughs> yeah. so I'm driving around. I'm like, where are these, where are these good hills at? I'm in Kansas. So it's pretty flat. It's, that's right you're in topeka kansas so like a lot of good yeah you gotta go to the stadiums really yeah like stairs and stadiums that's a big one but so like i i just one day after throwing i was like you know what let's let's get some speed work in so i measured out like 40 yards or whatever and uh i did, I did a couple like really slow just kind of jogged it just kind of get a feel of like what does running look like again because i haven't ran in five years maybe longer and uh and the last time i was running i was doing like long distance stuff so it's completely different and so i then i would do like i don't know what they call it but like you start off you start off like kind of jogging and then like right when you hit that that line then you kick in that higher gear yeah and then i start i did i do those and i just do like you know three sets at, at like 40 yards or whatever it uh Honestly, I could probably, uh, looking back, like I probably could get away with doing a lot shorter, but like just probably like a 20, 20 yard, 20 meter sprint and just, just explode right into it and then be done. Cause you know, you don't need to run, like sprint very far. We're not football players. Yeah. 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 Um, Dan John's got a good thing. Like uh, I think he calls grade eights or elite eights, where if somebody's really getting green to sprinting and this is a great, just great warm up, Like, it's just uh, you know eight steps, like literally eight walking steps, eight very slow jogs, and like by the time you get up to the last eight, you're sprinting, full, yeah. you're taking eight full strides. The real hard part is you got to follow that same progression of eight going down. So it's really good in that it helps you build and build and build, but also like you don't want to stop your sprint too short, right? And stub a toe, oh, or yeah. you know, like that. So like it's really kind of. Just, slowing you down over a long distance yeah yeah and that's pretty like the way the way i, I kind of looked at it was like like high jumpers like they just take those like those, they like, walk they just, walk. Like, good like steps and then like that's kind of what i just kind of just get into it and then i'm gone but what, what kind of jumps uh do you work in oh the block so i'll i'll try i'll, I'll like when I'm, when I'm jumping and I'll do I'll jumps, I'll do jumps on um, my strength block and my speed block. Good. But awesome. really, I really more, I'm more concerned myself on a speed block just because like I'm going to be run down in that strength block just, just from the load. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll alternate it. Usually uh, every, every week I'll, I'll do a different jump. And uh, one day I'll do it um, without a weight vest. And then, then the the next day with 
four or five days later, I'll, I'll put on a weight vest, do this, the same progression where I'll do, you know, box jumps for height where I just, I, you just have like, you know, tall box stack. Uh, uh, but you got a home gym. How big is your box? Cause it's just 24 inches and like, you're just kind of stuck with that height. No, I think, yeah. I think it's 32 actually is like the base height for it. No, maybe, maybe 30, maybe 30. And uh, I just, I just start stacking up bumpers and just, that's what I'm using. They have some smaller, like smaller plyo boxes. They're like 12. What are you jumping on? And what, what's your max height then? You have a max height uh, PR box uh, jump? <laughs> I think, I think I was, I think it's 52. Okay. Yeah. But like that, but that was weird. Cause like, I don't know how some people <laughs> got to like be on it and stand on it and then like walk off of it kind of height. That's fine, man. <laughs> it's still braggable, dude. <laughs> I touched it. I bounced off and I was like, I'll, I program off that and safety third got to be safe about it. <laughs> and like, well, like the last time I, I tried to incorporate some box jumps, like I was programming off that 52 and I was, and, uh, I was, I was, I was getting nowhere close. I was, I was getting scared every jump. I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh man. Like the fear was set again. So I was like, you know, what? just drop the weight or like lower the height, get some jumps in. Let's <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'll do box jumps for height, and um, I'll do like some uh, what do you call them, like death jumps, where you just kind of step off the box and then you go into like a bounding jump. I'll do those. So the ground uh, is like hot lava. Yeah, you're coming down and popping up, popping up or popping out again. Both. You're warming both. Okay. Like all, I mean, variety's king. So I'll switch it up, and. Uh, but the one I like to do the most is because it's easy to set up. I don't have to get the box out. I don't have to carry all my bumpers out into the driveway and stack them up. Is that just um, just like a, doing three bounds, just three big jumps in a row, and then just do that for like sets of like five. So you see, we're just trying to reach out, just up, got like both feet together. Boom, yeah. Boom. Okay. Yeah, and, it, and I always like always step into it. Like I don't, I don't ever start up like with both feet on the line. I'll step into it and then plant and go. Gotcha. Will you add weight to that? Are yeah. Weight on? How much weight? Like five, 10, 20 pounds? Like, I don't know. It's because it's like, it's, it's a, it's body armor. So like, I guess the weight. You're putting like, on a flak jacket, like a, like a level three flak jacket. Is that what you're doing? It's got ceramic plates in it. So, so they, <laughs> you got trauma plates in your weight vest for broad yeah. jump. I think overall it's like uh you know, it's dual purpose. It, it, it serves. <laughs> so, but DIY. Yeah. I mean, like, well, I can, now those are probably, those are like 20, I'd just say that's 30 pounds. I'd say it's at least 25. Oh, uh, with steel, steel plates, it'll be about that. But these are ceramic. So they're, they're built okay. Like, maybe at most 15. Okay. It's, it's not a lot of weight, but it is enough to change the, the move. So I think long. for a jump, 15 pounds. That's what I was thinking for a jump. Um, so for the double foot, uh, do you do that for the depth? Will you put on a weight vest for the depth jump? Yeah. And what, what's your depth? Just like uh oh, the fourteen inch box. Yeah. Okay. Something shorter, lower than that 30, 30 box. Okay. Is what I was. A knee out. Or a yeah. Box. yeah. So like, it's just enough to like to land in a in like in an athletic position and just explode off from that. Let's go over there right there. Now, um, you do any like clap push ups or push ups, kind of like upper body plyometric stuff? No, I've, I've, uh, I've dabbled in push ups just on like, like postseason kind of like bodybuilding phases just to get some extra work in. You know, with the home gym, like I don't have everything, so I can't just go like blow myself up on like hitting different mach machines and stuff. So I was working in like push ups and stuff at, on, a, on an off season, but I kind of stopped doing that. So, man, your home gym, like, you look like you got a Rogue Infinity Rack. And, uh, like, what do you got there in your home gym? Oh, I got uh, – Because it looks I, just like an iron – this is just like a black iron – from Instagram, this is like black iron, got bumpers, bar, and, yeah, just a set of stands, squat stands. Yeah, so I started off, like, when we moved into this place, I uh, – I, uh, The wood is beautiful. Like, that is – the wood and metal contrast – like just like behind you right now is gorgeous. Oh. Like I yeah. love that. Yeah, I, I, that was those are all pallets. So I, I had to like <laughs> beautiful. 
bunch of pallet wood. I was like, oh, I've seen people do this. It looks sick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Tore up my garage for like three days as I'm tearing apart, pounding out nails, and I'm like, like laying it all on the floor. Like, how's this gonna look? Then I ran out. I ran. It doesn't go to. The, I was afraid that flags there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just cover up a hole, like like yeah. salt tank redemption. Five feet tall, <laughs> and I have another like three feet I gotta cover. <laughs> but uh, one, I'll get to it one day. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so when I moved here, like I, I could is either in Topeka. There weren't many gyms. Um, uh, there, there are a couple CrossFit gyms. There are a couple like, uh, like uh, big Globo gyms. They had, they had a Planet Fitness and I think a Genesis. So like they didn't have. A, there was one strength gym in town, and uh, I don't know that those was, was all the way across town. And and I was like, ah, I don't know about doing that. I always wanted home gym, so like now's the time to do it. So we just got is a rogue. Uh, it's a squat stand, the Echo squat stand, which I don't think they make anymore. Because I looked. Okay. Look the other day, trying to because I tell my dad he needs to get a home gym set up, and he's yeah. Plus, so prizing some some stuff out for him. I, I didn't see the Echo stand, but uh, I got one of those. Got grabbed one of their one of their Olympic barbells, and I started with bumper plates and got a bench off of Amazon, and uh, that's where I started. And then I needed some more plates, so I got some uh, you know some cast iron plates. Got a couple sets of those. Then I need some more weight because I was, because I was like, oh, I'm stronger now. Cool. So I got some uh, high temp bumpers, but they're the rogue high temp bumpers, which are, I'm mean, able to know this. This is like some like esoteric uh, gym nerd stuff. Okay. Go ahead. But, I'm listening. So like, so high temp, um, every high school weight room has them, like the big tire ones. Imagine the big thick, the 45s are like as thick as a deck of cards. They're awesome. I love yeah. them. You get good grip on them and you can, and they, they bounce and I like the bounce and, but uh, all those are smaller than like a normal like plate. They're just a little bit smaller. So like if you're deadlifting or doing Olympic like weights or whatever, um, then like if, if you have, if you're, if you're combining like irons and yeah, amps, you're going to be landing on the irons every time. So like you're not wanting to like drop those things from overhead with a crack or what have you, because they're not going to be hitting the bumper, but rogue in their infinite wisdom, usually it's like, <laughs> Like a negative thing, but like they decided to go with like they talked to high temp. From what I understand, they talked to high temp, and they're like, "We want some of your bumpers, so some cheap like Echo bumpers, but we want them like the right size." And like high temp's like, "Do it." <laughs> and so I got a pair of those, and I I, I use those more than anything just because I like them, and it looks better. It looks like it's I got better. a. Little... <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, you, go ahead. Your platform, so like the the Echo and everything, like you. You built your platform out of pallets as well? No, no. Plat <laughs> no, the platform is uh, it's just some like three quarter plywood. It's like it's like two layers. So I have uh, I have like you know two going one way, and then two yeah. going like um, you know, one in the middle, then stall mats on the side. And no, man, your gym looks your gym looks awesome. It looks bare bone. It looks bare bones. Uh, what can we say? Apocalypse proof. Apocalypse proof. Yeah, it's, so like it's every, a, none of the stuff you got is going to break. You got any dumbbells or like any machines or anything at all in there? Yeah, I got um. So I started with like uh, those dumbbell handles that have like for like those weights that have like uh, one inch holes. Gotcha. And uh, like some of Walmart Academy, every, everyone's got them. And uh, I got I got like some for my brother in law. I think I think about my first set because like. They're the, they're the cheapest weights. Like if you're going to like to like Dick's Ford, you guys are going to buy some like some weights. The ones with the one inch holes are like way cheaper. So yeah. people put a lot of trash on them because they don't fit on a barbell. Yep. Like I don't know if you're trying to get a full dumbbell set, that's like the best way to do it is get some of those. So I got two. I got a little sets of those. And uh, I went to uh, play it against sports. Uh, I don't know if you guys have those. Yeah, we got them here in Arizona. Yeah, I think they're nationwide or whatever. But anyway, anyways, use sporting goods. Yeah. Yeah, we used to have one uh, here in Topeka. It closed down like 20 years ago, and it came back just in the last month or so. So I was driving by, and I was like, I want to go look. They had, um, you know, Olympic-sized dumbbells for like $5 a piece. And I was like, yeah, those are mine now. <laughs> so, That's a ridiculous price. I have, sir. <laughs> They're mine. <laughs> and so, like, so now I do, I do rows with those because, like, like dumbbell rows just because, like, yeah. the handle on them feels better. And uh, 
So now I have like two sets of dumbbell handles that I can load up with like, you know, the cheap weights or like my barbell weights. And uh, yeah, I got those and I got a, you know, dip station that you can do like dips or uh, like ab stuff. I'm not sure what that is, but. Just something from the, from again, from a used sporting goods store. But my, my buddy was, was selling it and he's like, he's like, yeah, that's mine too. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I just use it for dips. I don't know how to do ab workouts with that. That's not my bad. <laughs> So uh, just kind of like back, go, trying to fold in hammers and the weight room stuff. What are some lifts or jumps or drills or stuff you do in the gym that you think translate the hammer or gives you a good feeling like a hammer or is there nothing you think? Like, you know, I, I would, I'd want to say nothing because like, Oh really? I, okay. That's cause like, I'm, I try to think of like, you know, what's the movement to that's going to translate to hammers the most. Right. And I guess snatches and cleans because, you know, sure. your hips fast with your hands. It's all, it all works. But like, I don't know. It's yeah. That, that would probably be the only thing that I would say is like, like translates is just snatches and cleans just because it's just fast with the hips, fast with the hands. And that's, that's what hammers are so the plate like plate turning exercise and stuff like that like russian twists and things like that um like that feels like it's really close to that kind of circular motion right there yeah the, the hammer throw right there um it is slower and not in the positions yeah when you do those things so. yeah and I, I i've i've thought about you know like those kind of like um those 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 core movements like where you're turning but I just, I just never felt like they were, they were the key. Like that's not going to, that's not going to put you into like, you know, like from, from one Oh five hammer to a one fifteen hammer. I, I don't think those would be the things that do it. It's going to be the throwing at the end of the day. That's yeah. Then there's, 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 there's a lot of lists out there that help throws, but I don't know if there's any big ones for the hammers. I, for me, it's just, you got to get, get out there and throw because it's all, posi it's all positions. Like you can wind really slow and get it out there could just because you're hitting positions, but it like, yeah. And being, just being strong in general helps too. That always helps. It's not, it's not hurt, but yeah, but no, but like just get in, get in thrown, get into the, get into the range and uh, hitting those positions there. And it would yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. And, and man, anything else, like you want to, anything else you want to talk about? You want to go over anything else? Like that's kind of like all I really had as far as my notes and stuff to go over. I'd love to do this again sometime, man. Maybe talk about some other event. I could talk Highland Games all day, dude. Yeah, awesome, man. Well, uh, let's uh, let's let's set another date for uh, text out another date a couple weeks ago. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit stop record here, real quick. Um, I'm going to uh, 